Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to our live stream of evening prayer from the St. Michael and All Angels Facebook page. Today is the 2nd of January, and so I wish all of you a happy new year. And God's continued blessings upon you and your family, His protection, and His grace and love. Our service begins on page 60. We are still in the season of Christmas. So our opening sentence will be for Christmas. God is love. This is how he showed his love among us. He sent his only son into the world that we might have life through him. Page 62. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We will exalt you, O God, our Savior, and praise your name forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. So welcome to those now joining in as we say the prayer of intention. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. We say the canticle, Glory to you, on page 64. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. So let us take a moment to bring before God our sins. So, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. We say, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant, merciful Lord, to your faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and save you with a quiet mind through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so let us have our office hymn. And as we are still in the season of Christmas, let us sing hymn number 82, O Little Town of Bethlehem. CPWI number 82. Ooh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark street shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. For Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above. While mortals sleep, the angels keep their watch of wandering love. For oh, morning stars together proclaim the holy birth, and praises sing to God the King. 
silently, how silently the one trust gift is given. So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his heaven. No enemy here is coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and it enter in, be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. Oh, come to us, abide with us, O Lord Emmanuel. Amen. So we return to our psalm, our psalm for this evening's office is Psalm 145, Psalm 145. On page 660, Psalm 145, beginning on page 660. I do welcome those who have just joined us. I will exhort you, O God, my King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. There is no end to his greatness. One generation shall praise your works to another, and shall declare your power. I will ponder the glorious splendor of your majesty, and all your marvelous works. They shall speak of the might of your wondrous acts, and I will tell of your greatness. They shall publish the remembrance of your great goodness. They shall sing of your righteous deeds. <clears throat> the Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone, and his compassion is over all his works. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. <clears throat> They make known the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power, that the peoples may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. The Lord is faithful in all his words and merciful in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all who fall. He lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the needs of every living creature. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call upon him, to all who call upon him faithfully. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him, that he hears their cry and helps them. The Lord preserves all those who love him, that he destroys all the wicked. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And so we turn to our first lesson from the book 
of the apocrypha Sirach, otherwise known as Ecclesiasticus, chapter 3, verses 3 to 9 and 14 to 17. Sirach, or Ecclesiasticus, chapter 3, verses 3 to 9 and 14 to 17. Those who honor their father atone for their sins, and those who respect their mother are like those who lay up treasure. Those who honor their father will have joy in their own children, and when they pray, they will be heard. Those who respect their father will have long life, and those who honor their mother obey the Lord. They will serve their parents as their masters. Honor your father by word and deed, that his blessing may come upon you. For a father's blessing strengthens the house of, his, of the children, for the mother's curse uproots their foundations. For kindness to a father will not be forgotten and will be credited to you against your sins. In the day of your distress, it will be, be remembered in your favor. Like frost in fair weather, your sins will melt away. Whoever forsakes a father is like a blasphemer, and whoever angers a mother is cursed by the Lord. My child, perform your tasks with humility then you will be loved by those whom God accepts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we turn to page 67 as we say the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in you, O God, my Saviour, for you have looked with favour on your lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm and scatter the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things, and the rich we have sent away empty. You have come to the help of your servant Israel, for you have remembered your promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. So our second lesson is from Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 3, beginning at verse 12. Colossians chapter 3. 3 verses 12 to 17. Paul writes, As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another. And if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body, and be thankful. 
Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so we turn to page 55 as we say the long limitus. The song of Simeon. Lord, now you let your servants go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. So we have two passages kind of giving us advice or exhorting us to adopt certain attitudes and certain behaviors. Now it is important to remember that the books of the Apocrypha while they contain lots of wisdom and you know good advice and so on we must remember that these books will not are not taken as used for doctrinal teachings in the church and so it doesn't mean that we don't do what they say but it is we have to remember that <coughs> The words and the works of the Apocrypha are not, um, the church's doctrines were not, are not based on scripture from the Apocrypha. And yes, one of the commandments does say, honor your father and your mother, but we are, when it says those who honor their father, your sins will be forgiven. I mean, I don't know. You still have to account for your actions. And it's not because you honor your father and mother and you commit other kinds of sins willfully and deliberately. Does it mean that God will just say, okay, you were a good, um, you were a good child to your parents and you were good, you, you, you're not disrespectful and you, and you will just wipe out your sin. I don't think it works like that. So that, yes, it is a good idea because the the fifth commandment, I think it's the fifth commandment, honor your father and your mother, this is the one that comes with a condition. It says honor your father so that your lives may be long in the land. So that there is virtue or there is something to to inherit or to be gained by obeying, by honoring, by being respectful to your parents. And what it doesn't mean, I don't think it means that you can just do anything you like and still get away with it just because you honor your father and your mother. I'm not sure that is what they mean here. So we have to be careful when we, we read the, the books of the Apocrypha and, and we cannot say, well, look, the Bible says it says so in Sirach, and I can you know do. But the blessings of parents are always important, and it is always something to be to be sought after, um, especially when you maybe engage when you want to embark on some huge 
a, a new a new venture in life or some huge project or um, seeking to to get married or something like that. I think blessings of parents are very important in those cases because it means that they will support you and it means that they will pray for you. They will be praying for you and they will be praying for your success. They will be praying for your relationship and they will step in if you need help, if you need assistance and, and support so that if you do some if you do things that your parents are not in favor of then you, you know you lack that support and, and that is that is a very important support piece your, your parents are, because they have the wisdom they have the experience and they can guide you and they can tell you well you know I have from my all experience this has been what has happened and so on and so forth so the blessings of your parents are very important so it is good, it is wise, and it is um, desirable to come to, to honor your father. And I mean, it's, it's the right thing to do. And it also makes good sense. Even if, if, even if it were not a commandment, it would be a good thing to do. And then we have in Paul's letter to the Colossians, Paul is telling is asking or he's advising the Colossians on how they should behave and how they should interact with one another. Close yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness and patience. And these are some of the gifts of the Spirit or these are the gifts of the Spirit and in other words let the Spirit direct and rule your lives <coughs> and be obedient to what the Spirit says. Bear with one another <coughs> Excuse me. and if anyone <coughs> has a complaint, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must forgive. So <coughs> Paul is really just repeating the words of Jesus and these words can you know be likened to the, the Sermon on the Mount and the way that Jesus said we should deal with one another and he gave a specific um, set of steps to how to deal with conflict between each other between people you know to go to the person first and if you have not convinced them then you bring someone whom they respect and then you take it to the church and then finally as a last resort you treat them as you would a tax collector or a gentile in other words you have little or nothing to do with them but it doesn't mean that you hate them or despise them or disrespect them it just means that your relationship will not be as close as it was before and he's asking them to let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts and let the word of Christ dwell in you, you richly and do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. And what does it mean to do things in the name of Jesus? It means that it's asking yourself, what would Jesus do? And if Jesus, if it's something that Jesus would not do, then we don't. You know, if it's something that Jesus would not advise us to do, or if it's something that Jesus would not condone, or did, did not, or said, told his disciples, you must not do this, or you must not be like this, then we don't do it. We always think about how Jesus would deal with the situation, how would Jesus handle the situation, and this is how we are guided by doing things in the name of Jesus. It does not mean that we have to call Jesus' name in everything we do or in everything we say, but we just have Jesus in mind or have God in mind. Never put God out our thoughts when we act or when we say things. So which means that we always have to be in a, in a state of mind that we don't react 
how that we don't you know just jump off the handle and, and do things without thinking and that requires allowing the spirit to to control to have control over us and and exercising the 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 gift of self control that the spirit will have given us so that even when we we feel like behaving in certain ways and we feel like reacting in certain ways that um will not help the situation, will not build up the the other person or you know will not will add fuel to the fire in the situation instead of calming things down and we pray for the spirit of the wisdom, we pray for the spirit of peace, we pray for the spirit of self-control. And so this is how, you know, it's a, it, it's a constant action of choosing God. It's a constant action of having God in our thoughts and saying, well, God, how, how should I handle this? God, what would you, what would you do, Jesus? What would you do in this situation? And being mindful all the time of how we are to behave, how we are to react, and what would Jesus do? And it's not always, it's not easy all the time because we get caught up in life, we get caught up in in the way we do things and the way in the cultural thing the way that we do things and sometimes the things of God just go out the window you know in the moment because life happens and we are enjoying it but so it is always a struggle to have God in our thoughts always so that we will be guided and directed by his Holy Spirit it is a constant struggle, it's a daily struggle, it's a daily exercise until it becomes, you know, not more and more natural so that we just know or we just listen or we just hear the voice of God or the voice of the Spirit guiding us, warning us, um, holding us back, giving us that uh, sense of self-control um, and that sense of calm and that sense of peacefulness that we need to diffuse situations or to not react in a certain way that will not help the situation. So these are just some things to think about. The Lord be with you. So we turn to page 69 as we say the Apostles' Creed. Yes, forgiveness makes life easier, better, but it's not easy. Forgiveness is a, is a journey. It, is, it begins with your decision to decide to forgive. It does not come automatically and this is what some people have difficulty in understanding. It doesn't come automatically and you don't feel like doing it but it must start with the decision to forgive and once you start with the decision to forgive you go to God and God will help you God will you know help you to to chip away at the resentment and to, you will keep chipping away at the anger and chipping away at the hurt and eventually you will be able to really and sincerely forgive. So but it must start with a decision, your decision. And so don't don't rush to say that you forgive someone uh, just because you know it is the right thing to do and really deep down inside you are still hurting. Take it to God in prayer and let him help you to, you know, to break down, to, to release the hurt and to release the resentment and to release the anger. 
until we continue with the Apostles' Creed on page 69. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Lord, reveal your love among us, that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations, and teach our leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness, and his servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us and through us your will may be done. So we turn to page 159, where you see the collect for the second Sunday after Christmas, which it, today is the second Sunday after Christmas. Let us pray, O oh God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, sorry, grant, Lord, that we may be faithful to you without turning aside, worship you without growing weary, serve you without failing, diligently seek you, happily find you, and forever possess you, the one and only God, blessed forever and ever. Amen. Let me say the collect for Sundays. O God of peace, you have taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your Spirit lift us, we pray, to your presence, where we may be still and know that you are God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so in a moment of silence, I invite you to offer your personal petitions to God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So, as we continue in prayer, we lift up before God those who have lost loved ones through COVID or other illnesses or other circumstances. We lift up our sister Joanne, whose 
mother was laid to rest a few days ago. And we ask God to continue to comfort her and her family and to give her the, give them the strength to carry on. Rest eternal, grant unto her, Lord, that life perpetual shine upon her. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for the souls that faithfully departed, our two popular entertainers whom we lost recently, the Mighty Palmer, and earlier today we lost Kenny J, who died from COVID. We pray for their families. We pray that God will give them the strength to go on. We pray for the repose of their souls, that God will bring them into his everlasting presence. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, that light perpetual shine upon them. Lord, we continue to pray for an end to the pandemic. We pray that we will do what is necessary. Lord, give us your spirit of self-control, self of discipline, of obedience to the protocol and the practices. Lord, help us to be diligent and vigilant in our daily exercises so that we will take all the necessary precautions. We pray for those who are in hospital, in intensive care units and high dependency units, those on ventilators. Lord, we just ask you to heal them, ease their suffering, help them to use this time to get closer to you. We pray for their families who are concerned about them. We ask that you strengthen them at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for others who are sick and suffering, and you want to lift up our, the wife of our bishop, Mrs. Dawn Bakley. We ask that you continue to heal her and bring her to wholeness. Lord, we ask you also to continue to lift up our Bishop Claude as he journeys with her in her illness and as he continues to lead his flock, lead his diocese. Lord, we pray that you will strengthen him. You will give him your spirit of peace and perseverance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for an end to the crime and violence in our country. We pray for an end to corruption. We pray for an end to all the social ills in our land. We pray for an end to violence, all forms of violence. We pray for the protection of those who are most vulnerable. We pray for we lift up those who have been adversely affected by the economic situation. We pray for those who will be adversely affected when prices rise. Lord, we just ask that you help us, that you guide us, guide us, and that you sustain us and see us through these times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for our church for leaders, we ask that you that you sustain them with your Holy Spirit, that you anoint them, and that you strengthen them to do your will as they shepherd your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those places of the world that are experiencing hardships and destruction from natural disaster. We pray for the people of Colorado. We pray for the people of Kentucky and other places of the world who are where they are 
so they are suffering because of natural disaster or instability, violence. We pray for this situation between Russia and the Ukraine and we pray for calm and we pray for diffusion of the rising tension. Lord in your mission, hear our prayer. We pray that our leaders will seek the welfare of the people whom they were chosen to lead and whom they were chosen to govern, who they were chosen to govern. We pray for an end to corruption and greed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for those celebrating birthdays and other anniversaries at this time. We lift them up to you and we ask you to bless them, to sustain them, to give them health, strength, and prosperity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So before we end our act of worship, let us sing an evening hymn, hymn number 12, Blessed Creator of the Night, CPWI, Blessed Creator of the Light, CPWI number 12. Blessed Creator of the Light, making day with radiance bright. Thou didst over forming earth, give the golden light its birth. Shade of eve with morning ray, took from thee the name of day. Darkness now is drawing nigh, listen to a humble cry. Mary, near by guilty breast, lose the way to endless rest. No with idle thoughts and vain, find our souls to earth again. Rather may we heavenward rise, where eternal treasure lies. You reside by grace within, hating every deed of sin. Holy Father, hear our cry, through your Son, our Lord, most high, whom your thankful hearts adore, with the Spirit evermore. So to, to the prayer of dedication, Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our hearts, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and save all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit, and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or can see, by the power which is at work among us. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all ages. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So thank you my sisters for joining with us, for journeying with us at St. Michael and all angels for the service of evening prayer. We continue to have a peaceful and a restful night. As usual, we exhort you to observe the four W's. Watch and pray, wash your hands, watch your distance, and wear your masks. Please be careful. Please take all the necessary precautions. And again, a happy new year to all of you. Those of you I didn't see in the beginning, happy new year. God bless you and all your, your families with 
all the blessings of heaven with grace and love and peace and health and prosperity for the year. Thank you all. Have a peaceful and a restful night. Take care.